Hello Internet, Internet. Big Dave here, and I am cheap. Sure. Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and this is Glitch Space from Space Budgie. This game is currently available as part of Steam's Early Access Program. It is a work in progress. It is in Alpha, and it is currently available for $6.99. Space Budgie is a five-person studio from Dundee, Scotland, previously best known for their work on 9.03 meters, a game about the Japanese tsunami from a couple years back. This game is, well, it's very interesting. It's billed as a first-person programming game, and initially when that came through my email, it was very intriguing. I really thought, how do you do that? How does that even work? And it piqued my interest enough that I took a look at it. I took a look at it in its previous alpha version 1.3. They are now on 1.4. And we're going to take a look at this game. Hopefully interest some of you in what I think is a very, very interesting puzzle game concept that I hope they can flesh out and turn into something that I really would say could be memorable as a wonderful first person puzzler on the level of Portal. So let's go ahead and jump into the game here. We are a guy who is in cyberspace. And being a guy in cyberspace, we have a gun. I mean, it's not a shooty-shooty gun. It's more like a programmy, programmy gun. But we have a gun. And we also have some simple instructions that will kind of lead us around and, and tell us what to do for the first little bit. So yeah, that, that, this is what cyberspace looks like, apparently. Um, it's interesting. It's vast, of course. Uh, I really like this portal effect that they do here as you get from section to section of the game. Uh, you can walk around it. You know, it's just, it's a really nice little effect. And I, I was, it's, it's a great, impressive thing for you to see right out of the gate. You walk through and all of a sudden you're in a completely different place. Great. Just, just really wonderful way to start things off. Really simple here. Space to jump. And uh, they did a lot here to refine this section of the game from 1.3 to 1.4. And I have to give the developers a big thumbs up for that because they made it a lot more obvious uh, what your jump height was. By refining this little section here, they kind of help to, in your mind, ingrain your jump height. Yeah, they're explicitly telling you space to jump. But as they're getting you up this section here, they're sort of showing you the extent to which you can jump. How high can you jump? Well, about that high. And so that kind of helps you as you move forward. But now we're going to get into the main mechanic of the game, and that is editing the objects inside of cyberspace. So we're going to jump right in here and edit this object. It's obviously blocking our way. We'll never make it past that. We won't jump around it. So we got to do something about it. So let's go ahead and edit it. And uh, here you go. This is the special node-based programming that they created for the game. And it looks really complicated at first. I'll tell you, when I first saw this, I was really intimidated by it. I didn't see any way that I would ever catch on to this game. But the beauty is in the simplicity, especially early on. They teach you in a great way. And this is a good example of that. You see all these little locks? Well, that indicates you can't really do anything with those. So as complicated as all this looks down here, there's nothing I can do about that. I can't manipulate it. I can't do anything to it. In fact, I can only do one thing and that's add an object. So I'm going to add an object, as you might expect. <clears throat> but let's take a moment to kind of break this down. Take a look at what we're seeing here. So at the top we see true, and that connects to scale object. If we take a closer look at scale object, then we can actually start to define what some of these things do. This function applies. So since we have true connected to that, we're applying this scale object. This lower object, this lower node or nub or nodule or doohickey is scale. So it's showing us how we're going to scale things in the X, Y, and Z axes. And then we have this object, which has nothing connected to it. And that indeed is object. So if we're looking at this whole grand scheme, what we're telling it to do is scale an object to this size. But we're not telling it what object to scale. And that's where we come in here in this particular equation. We just tell it what object it actually needs to scale. And it happens just like that. So again, that looked really complicated, but they do a great job of introducing you to that idea in a really simple way. So we're going to pop through this little filler section here. I think these sections early on feel unneeded, but later in the game, these little sections from level to level, you kind of walk through these portals and go over to the next uh, section. They really work effectively because they allow you to reflect for a moment 
on what you've just done. So you get through this really tough section, and then as you're walking through to the next level, you get a moment to kind of reflect back on the things that you just accomplished. So it's pretty cool. And uh, here we are. Now that looks suspect. I can kind of see through that. And I don't like that. I imagine if I jump on that, I will pass through that. And indeed I will. So as I fall to my cyberspace death, we are now learning that we're going to need to edit this object. So uh, let's go ahead and edit it. And we'll take a look at it here. What are we doing here? We have an object, which is indeed this uh, polygonal, rectangular, cubicle platform. And we have a function to enable collisions. Alas, we are not applying that function. So the natural state of this object is to be transparent, to, to lack form, to not be solid. And we need to tell it that it needs to be solid. Uh, so let's say true. Let's enable collisions. And there we go. Collisions are enabled and we can move forward. That's just really, really neat. I mean, yeah, I, I know I'm not programming or anything, but the way that they're combining these different uh, concepts together to give you this feel that you're manipulating the world through the language of the world. I mean, this is cyberspace, right? What's the language of cyberspace? It's programming. It's also probably the second language is pornography, but, you know, it, it's programming, and that's how we're actually going to manipulate things here. So again, we're blocked. Uh, what do we have here? We have a function that is occurring. Okay, uh, these two are locked, but this one isn't. I find that a bit interesting. So right now we're saying uh, disable collisions false. So we're not disabling the collision of this particular object. So what can we do here? We could quite easily change that to true, right? So we can trash that false and change that to true. And we're going to get through that wall just like that. Yeah, there you go. And alas, we have another wall, so let's go ahead and uh, try to deal with that. So again, collisions, there's our object, true. So another simple reinforcement of the ability to disable the colliding on an object and allow us to pass right through them. Oh, there you are. That's you. You're that guy. So that thing is acting as a mirror right now. Uh, there, that, that's you, yeah. That's what a cyberspace person looks like. So now we have another little wall here. Uh, yeah, not going to get through that. So let's take a look. Uh, again, we are greeted with our familiar disable collisions. Here's our object, this red object, and we're disabling collisions. So let's go ahead and add that true statement. Um, okay, well, we don't have a true statement this time. Uh, so let's see, maybe we could say... What if we said not false, making false into true. Now that's a real convoluted way to do that, but actually interesting. And it enables the creators, the developers of the game to uh, challenge you with some interesting puzzles by not always giving you all the options that you need or the simplest option, but allowing you to kind of uh, move around and fiddle around with different possibilities. Uh, okay, so we, we know what this is. We know that this is going to be uh, no good for us here. We're going to fall right through that if we jump on it. So let's not do that. Let's instead get our first opportunity to do a little freeform programming here. Uh, so first of all, let's start with objects. Of course, we want a main object. That is this platform. So let's go ahead and grab that. Input, moving, okay. And physics, allow collisions. Hmm, okay. Well, I unintentionally connected those, but that is the only place that that object can connect to that object node there. So we're going to go ahead and connect our object there. And then we see moving false. Oh, okay. Maybe you notice that. Watch this false as I move away. It changes to true very briefly. Ah, so if we connect these together, this is basically calling to whether I'm moving or not. Am I moving? Yes or no. Right now, I'm not moving. So false. Hmm. Okay. So allow collisions is currently false because I'm not moving. But I'm going to believe that if I move, yeah, there you go. As I move, the collisions do indeed become enabled. So I'm acting a little bit like I've never played this before. I have played this, but I haven't played the version 1.4. Some of this stuff's in different order. Some of this stuff is uh, new. I believe this is new for 1.4. Uh, so, you know, some of it is me not remembering having played stuff, and some of it is potentially hamming it up for your benefit. 
So here we go. We have a wall that we cannot pass. What are we going to do? Probably some more collision stuff. Yes, indeed we are. Okay, so we are uh, enabling collisions. Well, we don't want collisions enabled, so let's see what we can do about that. Uh, okay, allow collisions. Sure. Uh, whoops. Oh, there's our familiar moving. And not. Okay. So let's see here. Now, first of all, it's pretty obvious. There's only uh, one place that uh, this can connect. So we have our allow collisions. It's only going to connect here. One criticism I would have of the game uh, at this point of the interface, I should say, more than the game itself, is indeed to uh, the locking. I understand why you have to lock these, but I can't move that. You know, I can move that and connect that node. I can't move that. Um, you know, I, I can't move that. That's, that just means I have to pull this over here and, you know, touch them, you know. And that's just a little bit, it's a little bit wonky. It's a little bit uh, unnecessary, I think. So, uh, yeah, so let's see. Moving not false. Okay, so we are... See if we can review what we've done here. <laughs> we are allowing collisions on the object when movement equals true. So if I'm following that correctly, when we move, that should become, yep, that should become passable. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Now, it does take a while to wrap your brain around this, and this is where I said these little sections kind of start to come in handy. Uh, you know, this ability to look back on what you just did to reflect, like, that was pretty cool what I just did, piecing that together that way. And uh, you kind of move here, and you get ready for the next challenge. So one thing I want to kind of finish up with here as I start to uh, wind down my look at Glitch Space is just with some concern that I might have about how this game will eventually find its legacy remembered. Now, this game as it stands is absolutely wonderful. I love the puzzles, but it's no more than a curiosity right now. It's something that I will play for a couple of hours and then put down. And maybe that's all that Space Budgie wants out of this game. But this concept is it's so interesting that I think it really deserves more. I'll take a pause here to explain what I'm doing. Uh, so again, here we're scaling this object along the z-axis by a factor of 20. There you go. Now we can walk on it. So I think it would be tragic if this game was simply finished up as a two or three hour puzzling experience, and this was it. Walking around with no real trimmings of story or narrative, just this. Just doing what I'm doing right now uh, as it's being done. I mean, this is something. You know, this really actually reminds me a lot of a game called Cube, Q-U-B-E, that came out a couple of years ago. And I think that game really missed its mark by not doing a little bit more to dress its world. And I think that that is right now uh, where Glitch Space is as well. They're at this point where they have just the basic shell of a puzzle game and they can continue to develop that basic shell and leave it as it is or they can expand that shell they can expand that shell into something that can make this game a very memorable property that is potentially something that could stand alongside memorable games like portal because yeah face it this is a game that is standing in the shadow of the monolith, with your, which is Portal. It's a first-person puzzle platformer with a cool mechanic at its base. So Portal is your mama. It's your daddy. You've got to figure out how to compete with it. Maybe, maybe not compete with it, but you've got to figure out whether you want to coexist with it or whether you just want to fly completely under the radar as a cool oddity that people may remember and a lot of people may never see. And I think right now Glitch Space is at that crossroads where it really needs to think about that. What does this game want to be? I don't really know right now. I don't think it really knows. I know what it is, and that is a very, very exceptional first-person platformer 
with a great base mechanic that I think is... It's one of the best I've seen in years, if I'm completely honest. But right now, I want it to be so much more than it is. Hmm. Yeah, I guess the uh, biggest sin that, that Glitch Space is committing right now is uh, not being great, only being extremely good. <laughs> So anyway, guys, I would highly recommend you take a look at Glitch Space. I have had a giant, huge blast uh, playing this game, and I'd like to thank Space Budgie for sending it over for me to look at. Absolutely enthralled with this mechanic. It does get far more complicated as you go. The trees, the node trees get a lot bigger. The programming gets more freeform, and indeed, the game really starts to shine. So guys, if you want to take a look at it, check the description below. You know there are going to be links there to Space Budgie's website, to Steam, etc., I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.